even while you even while you're listening to uh, this, uh, this short uh, talk, still try to feel your body and breathing in a, kind of in just a general way, be centered. <clears throat> so, as I mentioned last night, uh, you know, the first stage of the mindfulness practice especially the mindfulness practice is learning how to get grounded and centered in the present moment and using the, the body and the breathing. Because the breathing body is really actually you know, where we live and the mind operates <clears throat> through this breathing body. And that's where it experiences uh, the world. And I wanted to talk about, uh, mentioned about the concentration. Usually in Buddhist meditation, you know, people say concentrate, concentrate, and or they try to concentrate on one point. Uh, but there's different uh, meanings of concentration, different levels of concentration. And especially for the practice of mindfulness, if a person is sort of practicing the foundations of mindfulness and going to be developing the sort of vipassana level of awareness then there's something called uh, you know the popular idea of concentration is you focus your mind on one point try to hold it there and uh, not let it you know get distracted but that's very difficult to do and then the practice of mindfulness, it's not really that important. But there's another kind of concentration, which is called momentary concentration. And this is the ability to just feel and observe different sensations uh, coming and going uh, from moment to moment, or the ability to move the attention from uh, one spot to another to another and to keep it on that spot for you know as long as you want but at least several seconds in order to try to feel some uh, sensations kind of underneath uh, and then you know move it to a you, know, you keep moving it to another spot and another spot so it's called momentary concentration it's a mental skill and ability to you're directing it. Normally, we don't direct our attention because our mind is just pulled here and there by willy nilly by any uh, you know sensations or sounds or thoughts, and it gets just uh, you know pulled here and there uh, in an uncontrolled fashion. But in momentary concentration uh, and in the mindfulness practice, uh, deliberately moving the attention to different parts of the body, especially, is a, a, a very useful practice. That means you're in control of your mind. Mind's not in control of you. Normally, our mind is just dragging us around, you know, here and there, or getting into unnecessary thoughts and distractions just because we don't, you know, have any control. So we want to, uh, a lot of people talk about control, oh, that's a bad thing. Well, in meditation, it's not a bad thing. It's uh, controlling our mind in a good way, or you could say it's disciplining uh, the mind. So <clears throat> uh, that's why the, the breathing and the body is sort of the field of the uh, concentration, but not you know, necessarily keeping the mind on one point. Uh, and the ability to as, you know, go through the body and, and feel as different uh, body parts, keeping the attention there for a few seconds to try to feel uh, the subtler sensations under, underneath. And, uh, and eventually to feel the body is just a, a mass of changing sensations. 
what we normally call my body is basically just billions of, of cells, uh, you know, under the skin uh, that are constantly in vibration. And to, f to feel them, to tune the mind into them is a very powerful and deep level of uh, awareness. And, and also in the, in the, you know, the meditation, usually the emphasis is giving on the breathing, you know, and watch the breathing, watch the breathing. Now the breathing is important, but it's only one of many different sensations that are there going on in, in the body. And some people may not uh, be able to just keep the attention just on the breathing. So in, especially in the mindfulness practice, mindfulness of the body practice is not that important. Uh, you can equally just feel any other sensations in the body or all of those sensations are occurring in the present moment. They're what we call present moment uh, sensations. And the body is always uh, there. Uh, so you're, you can move the attention around to different spots. That's the way the mind won't get so bored. If you're just trying to feel the breathing, breathing in, breathing out, you know, it put you to sleep, some people. So uh, if you have that problem, then uh, moving the attention deliberately down through the body, uh, feeling the different uh, parts of the body, like I've, uh, you know, suggested in the last couple of meditations, you know, starting in the, the head, feel some sensations on your head, your eyes, and the lips, and then, you know, feeling your shoulders, and arms, and hands touching together, fingers, uh, the clothing touching the skin, all these things are producing sensations that can hold your attention. And so you can move the mind down, you know, all the way down through the body, feeling the buttocks pressing the, the seat and the, you know, the way the knees are bent and the feet underneath in your toes. And especially the hands and the feet have lots of sensation in them and they can be uh, equally as good or even better objects to focus on than uh, just your breathing. Uh, because again, the ability to notice different things is going to be a power that's going to be a very uh, useful uh, ability as the meditation deepens. So <clears throat> don't think that you always have to watch the breathing, but the breathing is always there in the middle, but around it and through it, above it, below it, on each side of the breathing, there's also you know, other sensations coming and going. So the ability just to, to note and feel them is a, called momentary concentration. Uh, and that's the kind of concentration that's uh, useful in really in the more, especially in the more uh, advanced levels of uh, the Vipassana uh, awareness. But uh, is, you're keeping the attention within the body. So that's also a concentrated state. The mind's not you know, running out to, to the past and the future and to external objects. So it's a specific kind of mental training. And it's similar to uh, uh, <clears throat> sort of, you know, trying to tame a wild horse. If you have a wild horse or even a, a wild dog, you chain its uh, chain him down or her down to a with a short you know a little rope of one or two feet long it's gonna you know struggle to get away and maybe damage its neck but instead if you give it a let's say a 20 foot rope and let it kind of move a little bit uh, it'll reach the end of the rope <clears throat> and then stop and go around. So it's still right in front of your eyes. It's not running off. You know, even though it's moving around a bit, it's still right in front of your eyes. You're standing on the corral and it's watching everything. Uh, so the same way uh, in developing this awareness of the body, 
Uh, that's the kind of concentration that uh, is useful, uh, you know, uh, to keep the mind focused in the body and also to get used to different sensations, uh, which we'll talk about later, which is a, uh, another sort of step in the, in the practice of the, the mindfulness. So, So again, the, what I mentioned, the breathing body, that's the field of attention or the field of concentration. Uh, you know, in his uh, initial stages, not only the initial stages, but even in advanced stages. Uh, <clears throat> but then while you're doing that, of course, as I already mentioned, the five hindrances or the, the three main hindrances are the ones that are trying to block our mind or prevent us from being able to, to do that, to develop that kind of uh, awareness. So especially the sleepiness, uh, as I mentioned, the worst of the hindrances or that kind of, you know, the, the, this kind of thing. Uh, and that's usually because you're not aware of the body. And so the chin goes down. The moment the chin starts going downward, that means your attention is all already getting diminished. It's like dimming down a light switch. And so that means you've lost awareness of the body. And that's why awareness of the body is such a useful thing. Because everything comes through the body. And so when you're aware of that posture, sitting, breathing, sitting, breathing, you'll be able to notice when the chin starts moving down because the awareness is already there in that area. They can be aware of chin drooping, chin drooping. And so you can mindfully you know, take a deep breath and kind of mindfully lift the chin back up level and see how that helps to perk up your attention. <clears throat> or if some pain starts to arise. See, normally our mind is slow to react because either we're half asleep or we're uh, lost in our thoughts. So we don't see the initial onset of pain or sleepiness or other things until they've already taken over our nervous system and then uh, make, make it more difficult to uh, detach from them. So that's why the mindfulness of the body is such an important uh, uh, training uh, tool. And when I say body, I mean breathing because breathing is also in the body. Uh, you can't really separate them. The breathing is throughout the whole body. You know, when the, the lungs are expanding and contracting, basically it's sending rippling effects out through the whole body. It actually, you can feel if you're really focused. And so it gives you something to, uh, you know, to, to pay attention to. Because if you just say, watch the breath, you know, if you watch the breath, uh, this is, there's not a lot there to really grab your attention, to keep your attention. So, especially if you're trying to focus your attention on some very uh, opaque, uh, subtle, super subtle sensation like that. But when you feel the expanding and contracting sensation, that's more suitable for this kind of momentary awareness because and, and also, if you're doing some kind of deeper breathing, you can feel how the you know, different sensation of expansion in your abdomen and your rib cage, and maybe the upper chest. And on the out breath, you feel that contraction. You, feel, you can feel two or three or four you know, little sensations uh, in one in breath and in one out breath. So that perks up the mind. It you know, it's, keeps the mind alert. And so that's called the momentary concentration, being able to follow it. And then when something else arises in the body, like an itch or, uh, you know, maybe body movement, the, the attention is you know, right there, already there. So it sees it very clearly and very effortlessly. You don't even have to look for anything. It just appears in the awareness. Uh, and especially if you can kind of hold that outline of the body and the mind. So <clears throat> that's what I, just, I wanted us to uh, sort of remind you of that and uh, you know, suggest and encourage you to try to work with that uh, 
because that is going to be the, a good foundation for uh, the practice of the mindfulness as it, uh, it deepens. But it all depends on how the ability to stay grounded and centered there in the present moment, uh, you know, in, in the breathing body. So sometimes you can, you know, observe the breath for a few breaths, feel that, but you don't have to stay with it. You feel something on this, you know, feel your arm. That's very close to your breath, right? Only a couple of inches or your head. Anything in the body is just an inch or two away from the breathing, right? So it's not like you're having to search around for anything. It's right there. It's very close. So it's not really distracting. Uh, but anyway, it's something because it's new to a lot of people. It, you know, it takes a little bit of, uh, you know, practice to to get into. <clears throat> but at the same time, while you're doing that, you have to be alert for thoughts because thoughts are always trying to dart in, and thoughts arise from the deeper, from the unconscious mind, our thoughts and urges. So because our attention is not grounded in the body, uh, we don't see those thoughts and urges arising until already they've sort of triggered off our reactions and we've become uh, carried away in them. So again, by using the body as that field of attention, uh, when a thought starts to come up, we can uh, kind of see it as a little blip on our radar screen, our thinking is arising. And you can, uh, have the ability to kind of keep some detached observation to it. Oh, it's just a thought of my mother passing by. Okay, never mind. Well, it's a thought of the past, thought of the future. And you can kind of just see them as little uh, thought bubbles or, you know, before you've become dragged into their content and uh, taking them personally, you know, everything else that happens when you get lost in your thoughts triggers off your emotions and memories and so on. So the ability to uh, you know see those thoughts before they've carried you away is, is of course the very important part of the training, so that we can keep our attention flowing in the, from moment to moment and uh, developing our concentration. So concentration simply means not being distracted. It doesn't mean focusing your mind on one tiny object. So anyway, this momentary concentration, I just wanted to mention that because it's not very often talked about as an alternative to just fixing your mind on one point, which is more difficult. Uh, but anyway, people are different, so. Okay, anybody have any uh, questions particularly about that? Counting of the breath that plays an impact eventually it's like the counting of the moment. Well, I I uh, recommend counting the breaths from one to ten, and using that as an initial concentration point. Because even to practice momentary concentration means you have to be relaxed to a certain extent. You have to be relaxed and kind of uh, centered a bit to do that. So the counting of the breaths is useful because until you can count your breaths from one to 10 without getting lost or without going to sleep, again, those two things are the biggest enemies to the meditation, sleepiness and uh, getting lost in the thoughts. Uh, so counting the breaths is a challenge because we always, we like to think we can count 10, right? So we're asking you to count your breaths from one to 10. And you get to three or four and you find yourself half asleep, or lost your, your awareness. Oh, where was I, where was I, was it three or four? If you have to second guess where you were, start again at one. So it's like a challenge. You don't always wanna to have to keep going back to one and starting again, right? So it's a challenge to help you to stay more awake and not allow your mind to drift off into fantasies or enjoy that dreamy kind of unconscious level of awareness. So, uh, but so if you can count the breaths from one to 10, 
Sometimes I, I recommend people from once you reach 10 to reverse the count back to one because it takes more alertness not to get confused on where you're counting. So even though the counting could be a distraction, it's a helpful distraction. It's better than you know, counting your money in your bank or your sheep or something, you know, with uh, other thoughts. So uh, you count the breaths from one to 10. If you can make it to 10 without getting lost, I would say that's what I like to call the first stage of concentration. And because that's almost a miracle for most people who wouldn't be able to do that, not right away. So uh, you can work with that. You want to you know, focus on the breathing, you work with that counting. And there's different ways to do it, but the way I suggest is, again, focusing the attention here because it's more prominent and maybe even combine it with some uh, deeper breathing. So take a, a little extra effort just to you know, take a slightly deeper breath. Feel that expansion, one, two, three, like that. And that, because that helps to keep the mind alert. And then the out breath, that also helps to oxygenate the blood and uh, it helps to keep more focus. And so you can combine that with the counting. So, you know, you know if you feel the in breath, counting at the end of the in breath, or even while you're counting, you know, one. One, you can repeat the word even a couple of times, especially if you have too many thoughts and to counteract the getting lost in thoughts. One, and then the out breath also, one. Try to feel the last bit of air go out. Then the next in breath, two. And then the out breath, two. Like that, up to 10. And again, as I mentioned, when you get if you get lost in the thought, don't get frustrated or angry at yourself or anything else. Just, just start again at one until you can make it up to 10. And then when you can make it up to 10, let it go. Let go of any uh, deeper breathing. And then, but then keep the attention on those, those same sensations, but to feel the shorter or the, the irregular breath. When you're not controlling or uh, doing you know, uh, disciplined breathing, then of course the, the breath is always changing. Sometimes it's longer or shorter and uh, so on. So you just, you observe uh, those and that helps to keep the mind alert. That's why this is a much better way of uh, observing the breath. And if you try to fix your mind on a tiny subtle point, like the air going through the nostrils, it's, it's so subtle that uh, people get frustrated and it's not easy to notice. And so the mind starts thinking about other things or it can be kind of hypnotic and it draws out. But even if it, uh, it is, uh, using the breath in the center of the body is going to be more practical and useful in the daily life as well as the uh, further practice of the momentary concentration. Okay. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and uh, start then. Just try to get comfortable in the sitting posture. <clears throat> Just place your hands either one on top of the other in your lap, or actually, I recommend people to uh, not let the hands kind of rest down like that because it pulls. It pulls the shoulders, subtly pulls the shoulders forward and to lean forward because of that extra weight. But if you keep the hands lifted up just a little bit, uh, just below the navel, kind of touching the abdomen just below the navel, it takes a little bit of effort to do that, but that's going to help you to sit straighter. And uh, also, if you leave the hands on the legs, gravity is going to push them into the legs and cause discomfort. So you can hold the, the, the hands just slightly off the, the legs that helps to keep the shoulders uh, 
back and uh, to, to be able to sit the most straight. So just gently close the eyes. Just feel the eyes and the sockets. Feel the eyelids stretched over the eyeballs. Just feel those subtle eye movements. The point behind the eyes is the natural awareness point in the brain as well. So from that feeling the eyes, just feel the face, feel the skin stretched over the skull, especially your forehead. Nose, cheeks. You feel the lips touching together. Feel the dryness or moistness in the lips. See if you can feel the tongue inside the mouth, where the tongue may touch your teeth. Let the awareness move down to feel your shoulders. Relax the shoulders. You feel the clothing where it touches the skin of your shoulder. It's that momentary concentration, feeling a different sensation. Let the awareness move down to feel the arms or the weight of the arms hanging from the shoulders. Feel the clothing touching the skin of the arm. You feel your elbows. You feel the expansion, the contraction, the stomach or chest area. Maybe take a deeper breath, feel that. Feel the clothing rubbing against the skin of your stomach or chest. Now feel your hands and fingers. You can notice the outline of your thumb, other fingers, where they touch together, where they touch your leg. And feel the subtle pulse of blood in the fingers and Palm. Now I feel the Inward curve of the lower spine, where the spinal column joins the pelvis.
Just understand that that inward curve of the lower spine supports the weight of the upper body. And feel the buttock pressing the seat. Feel or imagine 50 or more pounds of body pressing into the seat. See if you can notice the right and left buttock. Just remind yourself of sitting, sitting. present moment of the body. And feel the way the knees are bent. The lower legs tucked underneath the feet. The feet press the floor. You're wearing socks, feel the sensation of the socks on the skin of the feet. You feel your toes. See if you can feel the outline of your big toes. Just all of your toes together. Feel the subtle pulse of blood. The tingling sensations in your feet. Again, just remind yourself of sitting. 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 And now kind of just reposition awareness to feel your eyes. From that point from the eyes, try to feel that outline of the whole body, the sitting body. A general sense of the head, arms, hands, buttocks, feet, clothing touching the skin, all those different places we went through. Put them all together, they form an outline of the body. Just check the chin, drooping downwards, lift it up level. Notice the difference in your attention. And just try to hold that outline of the sitting body in the mind's eye. Then take a few deep, slow breaths Feel that more dynamic expanding and contracting in the middle of the body. Holding the air in the lungs two to three seconds to allow all the oxygen to get into the bloodstream. Sent out to all the cells of the body. You can imagine that process happening that will help you to stay concentrated as well. Just breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, 
sitting here and now. Breathing in, letting go of the past and the future. Breathing out, sitting here and now. Breathing in, feeling the whole body. Breathing out, feeling the whole body. Now try counting your breaths from one to 10 on your own. Try to main, maintain a more constant attention to the breathing. You can continue to take slightly deeper breaths or if you're tired of that, you can let the breath return to its uncontrolled rhythm. Anytime you get lost, carried away in thoughts, or go to sleep and start again at one. Feel the last bit of air go out of the lung of the out breath. And the next in breath.
you've been able to count to 10 without getting lost. Just discontinue the counting, keep your attention focused in the same place and notice the subtle movement, the irregular movement. Try to notice the four phases of each breath cycle. The expanding in breath and the brief pause. The contracting out breath and the brief pause. Knowing when the breath is coming in. Knowing when the breath is going out. The knowing is the alert awareness. I feel like being a scientist sitting in the laboratory, looking down through a microscope. This breathing body is the laboratory of the meditator. The microscope is concentrated awareness. Notice how each breath is different, sometimes longer, sometimes shorter, sometimes you feel it in the abdomen, other times you feel it in the rib cage or upper chest. It's always changing. It's the momentary concentration. Breath by breath, moment by moment. At the same time, be alert for thoughts sneaking up to steal your mind away. Just recognize thoughts as thinking, thinking. It's 
stay with the breathing. In, in, sitting. Out, out, sitting. Even while feeling the breathing in the center, and notice other sensations coming and going in, around, or through that breathing body awareness. Body movements, gurgling, stomach, other sensations, clothing touching the skin in the background. Quickly, itchy sensation. The body keeps sitting and breathing. Sitting and breathing. Breathing body is the lifeline, the natural connection, the present moment, awareness. Moment to moment, awareness.
The mind gets drowsy, too many thoughts. Come back and do some more regulated, deep, slow breathing. Help stay awake in the body. When any aches or pains arise in the body, be aware of those sensations, just well up 
come to a peak, how they attract your attention. Any aversion the mind may have toward the painful feelings, try to relax around them. See how those sensations are always changing. Those sensations are just occurring within this larger body. Keep that open, the body open. Those sensations won't be so painful. They're impermanent. They may disappear after a moment. If any sounds distract your attention, be aware of it as just hearing, hearing. The sound vibrations passing in one ear, out the other. And if you think about the sounds, recognize that as thinking, thinking. Let go of both the sound and the thinking. Always coming back, just in, in, sitting, out, out, sitting, sensations, sounds, thoughts, they're all just coming and going through this breathing body. Like wind, wind blowing through the open windows in your house. Come in one in the window, out the other. And what thoughts triggered off by that sound vibration? Don't let the mind jump to the future. Stay connected to the body. And just mindfully 
Place your hands at the edge of the knee. <clears throat> Take a deep, slow breath. On the in breath, stretching the head back. Pull the hands on the knees to arch your lower spine. Just feel the sensation. On the in breath, lift the head up. On the out breath, press the chin to the top of the chest. And stretch the neck vertebrae. On the in breath, lifting the chin up level to the floor. Relaxing on the out breath. You'll keep feeling the body. Don't be in a rush to the future. And slowly unfold your legs. Being aware of the changing sensations or the relief of discomfort. Flex your toes a few times. Get the blood coming back into the legs and feet. Right, nice, good. Arching, flexing with the feet, the arches, the toes. And make some circular movements with your ankles and feet. because of stiff joints is the cause for so much pain, discomfort. Okay, then the Forward stretch, hands at the chest. In breath, hands over the head. Out breath, touch the chest, reach forward, hold on to your toes or feet. Pull on the feet, pull the spine forward, downward. Just reach a sort of maximum stretch. Just hold that, feel the sensation. Breathe in, sit up, let your hands rest on your knees, just close the eyes. Try to feel that outline of the body, legs stretched out in front, heels pressing the floor, buttocks pressing the seat. Hands and fingers resting on the legs. Feel the clothing touching the skin. And feel your heart beating.
Feel the head balanced on the top of the neck. Feel the sensations on your face. The prickly sensations. Your lips touching together. Subtle eye movement. Awareness of the body. This body is the natural resting place, home for this mind. This mind is connected to the whole nervous system, every cell in the body. It's connected to the nervous system. You can feel those vibrations. called deep body awareness. If you're grounded in deep body awareness, everything else just kind of passes overhead without disturbing sound. Okay, now draw the feet one at a time up towards your cushion mat. Place your hands on the floor by your hips. Then you're going to push the body up, try to come up into the squatting position on the balls of your feet. Press the hands to the floor. Just close the eyes or mentally feel that position, both hands pressing the floor, the toes. Feel any pain. And on an in-breath, you feel the muscles of the legs pushing the body up as you breathe in. Slowly stand up. Be aware of any dizziness, of any rush of sensation. Standing up straight. The arms hang at the side. Take a deep breath and arch back a little bit, pull the shoulders back, hold the air in a couple of seconds. Then relax with the out breath, be aware of sensation. Rest the attention on the eyes. Feeling the outline of the body. Take a couple more deep, slow breaths. Flood the standing body with oxygenated blood. Hold the air in the lungs three or four seconds to feel that subtle vibration. Feel the last bit of air go out of the lungs on the out breath. So breathing in, letting go of the past and the future. Breathing out, standing. Here and now, before the body was sitting and breathing, now it's standing and breathing. Everything else is the same. Sensations come and go, sounds come and go. 
thoughts come and go. The body just stands and breathes. Okay, now we're going to do some walking awareness around the room. So uh, people on the right and left side, move your cushions in towards the center. So you form a sort of like a racetrack around the cushions. All over. So to spread out in a kind of an oval shape around the cushions, you get at least uh, maintain COVID distance, right? Six feet, There's plenty of room. Don't breathe on your somebody's neck. Would you come forward? Fill up these spaces. Go that way. So uh, in the walking awareness, we're gonna be walking around this direction. Right? And uh, we're gonna focus on the movements of the feet. And it's good to coordinate your steps with the movement that helps to remain more focused and bring a more harmony between uh, the body and the mind. And so, on the in breath, you want to lift the foot up and swing the foot forward. On the out breath, try to touch the heel first and then feel that gradual pressing of the feet and toes on the ground as the upper body moves forward on the out breath. So it's a lifting, swinging with the in breath, the out breath touching, pressing, shifting forward. That's the momentary concentration being aware of the lifting movement, the swinging movement, lowering movement, pressing movement, shifting forward movement. So if you can tune in to those movements, that's how you really uh, get develop the concentration. Uh, now, it may be a little bit difficult for some of you if you don't have a good balance, you're not used to it. So just to try to do it as best you can. Again, uh, spread out a bit. I'm, I'm not going to be walking.